sister this morning as she brings the word to us. Amen. Glory to God. Come on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify the Lord as she comes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. We welcome her this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and just praise God this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be exalted. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel God this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. If I'm honest, I am so nervous. Praise the Lord. But there's just something about the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just get my greetings out the way because I love the atmosphere that we are in at this moment. Hallelujah. First, I just want to greet everyone. I, I want to start off by honoring my pastors, Pastor McLeish, who is absent on assignment, um, to Lady McLeish, who is here this morning. Praise God reigns to my husband, who is viewing online, and to every officer, visitor, and those watching on Facebook. God bless you this morning. And above all, I honor God this morning, for without him, I am absolutely nothing. Praise God. I just want us to just take another few moments just to give God thanks hallelujah if you are here this morning it means that god has kept you praise god count it a blessing to be in good health hallelujah because it's not until sickness comes that we realize that sometimes we take health for granted glory be to god if i am completely honest saints i the past few not, few months i have not been feeling my best and even this morning i was struggling but i know who god is and i know what he is capable of doing I am so thankful for Evangelist move, uh, Mahoney for moving as the Lord led her because I saw that in my spirit that, that there's an attack of, uh, towards God's people of having them have sickness in their body. But I know God to be a deliverer this morning. I know him to be a healer, not just physical sickness, even if it's mental, emotional. God is able to heal, deliver, and set you free this morning. And so I just want to just remind some but before I go into this word that God is able there's nothing that God is incapable of doing on today glory be to God it may seem like a big thing it may seem like this thing is not going to go away but God is able hallelujah Jesus God is indeed able and I give God thanks this morning glory be to God hallelujah Jesus Praise God. We are just going, time is going a bit, so we are going to go into the word for this morning. Praise the Lord. Um, if you all have your Bibles, you can go ahead and follow along with me to the book of Jonah. And we are going um, to be going a bit back and forth with the scriptures, seven scriptures, but we are going to jump. Praise God. So Jonah chapter 1, um, verses 1 through 3. And we'll start there. And it reads thus, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish for, from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. We are going to jump to Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. And it reads thus, Then the Lord prayed, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell I cried. I and thou and thou heardest my voice. And then we're going to flip the page to Jonah 3, verses 1 through 3. And it reads thus, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. 
Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And here ends the reading of God's holy word and is already blessed and we give God thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Father, I bless you this morning. I honor you, Father, and I give you thanks, Lord Jesus. Father, as I come before your presence on this morning, Lord, I'm so nervous, but Father, I pray, my God, that you will speak to your people on today, Father. I pray, God, in this present moment, Lord God, that you will just put myself aside, and I pray, Father, that, God, you will speak to me, Lord God, empty me, Father, of everything that's not of you, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you will speak to the house, speak, God, to your people, what it is that they are in need of, Lord God, this hour. Father God, you know them, oh God, you know everything concerning, God, your people. And I pray, Father God, that in this moment, Father, that, God, you'll just use me as a mere vessel, my God, to speak unto your people this morning. And so, Father, I ask, my God, that your Holy Spirit, God, will move in this place, Father. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, this past Wednesday, uh, the Lord's, and you may all be seated. Praise God. Um, this past Wednesday, the Lord spoke to me concerning the topic that we've been on, which is obedience. And as he spoke to me, um, he told me to go to the book of Jonah. Now, we've been on the topic of obedience, but this morning I want to talk about the opposite of obedience, which is what? Disobedience. Amen. Um, I believe that most of us, if not all of us, have heard the story of Jonah. Um, as a child, we were told that Jonah was swallowed up by a large fish, and some assumed that it was a whale. And after three days, the large fish spat Jonah out after he was in the belly of the fish. And um, even now, some Christians who there are some Christians who argue that the story of Jonah wasn't even real because, I mean, what human can be swallowed by a large fish and survive, right? Um, well, my response to that is, if you have trouble believing in that story, you might as not well believe in the entire word because we know something about the word and we know that God is in fact able to do that which seems impossible. Amen? Praise God. And so disobedience is nothing that is new between man and God. Um, we can look toward the very beginning of God's word when it speaks of God's creation and when he had created man in his own image. Um, in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 16 through 17, it tells us, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God gave them a commandment, and they were instructed to obey his commandment. But what did man do? He disobeyed God. You see, God didn't want Adam and Eve to know the difference between good and evil because that would mean that, he would, that they would have to experience both good and evil to know the difference. Um, they already knew goodness because they knew that God is good. But to experience evil, they would have to leave God and experience something that was complete opposite to him. And so that's why God commanded Adam to not eat from the tree because he knew what would occur afterwards if he were to do so. You see, disobeying God's commands can leave you with years and if not generations of consequences. Um, you want an example? I will give one for, um, for example. Today, we are all reaping the consequences of Adam's sin, even though we did not physically eat the fruit ourselves, right? And so throughout time, God has continued to instruct his people of what to do, yet even to this very day, man still continues to disobey God. I want you to remind yourself and tell yourself this morning, um, I must obey God. I must obey God. Amen. When we look into the story of Jonah, God gave Jonah an instruction. He told Jonah to go to Nineveh and to preach against it. And immediately after God commanded Jonah to do a thing, what did Jonah do? 
he ran from the presence of God. And so how very human of us to run away from God every time he instructs us to do something. It's very humanistic of us to do such a thing. And because of this, the Lord allowed Jonah to be swallowed up by a large fish in order to take him to a place of complete vulnerability and surrender. And so he had to bring Jonah to a place where the only person that he could cry and speak out to was no other but God himself. Amen. And so has God ever taken you to a place of that rock bottom? Has God ever taken you to a place where all you had to do was just surrender to him? You didn't know what else to do in your life, who to run to, who to go to, but he had to bring you to that dark place where all you could do is just cry on the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I myself have been in that place. And so when we look into the book of Jonah, You see, God had a purpose and a plan for Jonah, and that was for him to go and to speak to the people in Nineveh, to warn them of their evil and foolish ways. And so when God commands you to do something, you do it. Amen? It doesn't matter how crazy or big it may seem. God did not um, call somebody inside of the city of Nineveh to preach to Nineveh, but he called somebody who was an outsider. He called somebody who had to put themselves in an uncomfortable position and so sometimes obeying God means that we have to face our fears it means that we have no other choice but to be put in that uncomfortable position it may seem unfair it may seem like something that we cannot do but sometimes that's what obeying God means it means being put into that uncomfortable position praise God hallelujah Praise the Lord. You see, obeying God sometimes means doing the opposite of what your flesh desires. You see, us humans, we have a very difficult time obeying God. We we want to go about doing things our way. And so we create the plans for our own life. And I wasn't here last Sunday, but I heard the word that Prophet McCray had ministered and had preached. And um, when Pastor called me on this past week, I already knew I was preaching before he even called me. And so when he did call me, I was like, Pastor, how do you know these things? Because he said, you already began to write the word. And I said, yes. And um, the Lord had me to stay on the same topic that we have been on, which is obedience. And then I asked the Lord, um, I said to the God, why are we still staying on this topic? Because Prophet McCray speak, spoke on it. Um, Mother Shirley spoke on um, total commitment. Praise God. But I heard the Lord tell me that he wants the church to hear it another time. Praise God. And so I want to tell those who are hearing me this morning to stop doing things your way and stop creating your own plans. Praise the Lord. In John 14, praise God. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14, it tells us that if you love me, you would keep my commandments. Praise God. The word also tells us to be ye holy for I am holy. But no, we want to continue to live a double life. We want to continue to act a certain way in church and in outside we're a completely different person. God told Jonah that the wickedness of Nineveh was before him. So what makes you think that God cannot see what it is that people do behind closed doors? What makes you think that God don't see the intent and purpose of man? Why is it that some people think that God does not see the very things that occur behind closed doors? Glory be to God. And so what makes makes you think that God don't see the plans that you are making for yourself. God is all seeing, he's all knowing, and God is not a fool. He knows the plan and the heart of man, even when some people try to put on an act 
and a show. Our God knows what they are doing. Glory be to God. And so you can't put on an act before God. You can't uh, put on a mask before God because God is able to see all things concerning your life. Praise God. And so when we look into being disobedient, disobeying God means that you are in rebellion. The Bible says that the ox knows his owner and that the donkey knows his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. When we look at at that, that scripture in the Bible, God is saying that the animals know their owner. An animal knows his owner. But how is it that we do not know our God? How is it? that we still continue to struggle to obey. An owner, an owner tells a dog to sit, the dog will sit. You tell a dog to give him your paw, the dog gives you the paw. But God tells you to do something, what do we do? We run from God, we disobey his commandments. Glory be to God, glory be to God. And so God is not going when we act according to our own plans, God is not going to bless something that is not his will nor his purpose. I remember last Sunday on Facebook Live, because I wasn't here, Elder Shirley had wrote something and it stuck with me. God is not going to bless a mess. God is not going to bless something that is not his will or his purpose. Glory be to God. And so... To be an apostolic, it means that you relate and believe in the teachings of the apostles. So why do we as some apostolics continue to act and walk as though we don't know the truth? Why is it that sometimes we continue to walk like we don't know, have never heard the word of God? We know right from wrong, but yet we still continue to disobey God. We still continue to have those moments of of doubt. And I'll I'll be honest, sometimes I I do doubt myself when God speaks to me to do something. Praise God. And so I know I'm not the only one. Praise the Lord. And so the word of God tells us a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And yet many are continuing to live the lifestyle of having one foot in and the other one is out. Praise God. And so saints of God, it doesn't take much to disobey God. It don't take much to break his commandments. All it takes is just one word, one action, one thought, and you'll find yourself in a place called rebellion. You'll find yourself in a place called disobedience. Praise God. And then we wonder and we ask ourselves, where, where is the progress in the church? Where is the power? And so if you want power so much, then travail before God. If you want the anointing so badly, then live holy and be upright. So many people want to be seen as though they have it all together. But when you take a closer look at some people, you realize that they are in fact living a double life. Praise God. Glory be to God. And um, I'll just close off with this little te- story, testimony, I guess, of mine. Um, I will use my, myself as an example of disobedience. Um, when in 2016, um, I had gotten married for the first time. And I had met this individual in my former church that I was in. And almost everyone around me warned me not to marry this, this individual. Um, I had my former pastor, um, even the pastor who had married us, ask me, are you sure? And, um, and a lot of people around me, and even I myself, I saw these red flags, but I ignored it and did what my flesh wanted to do. And um, you see, at the age of 19, I had a plan. Okay, I had a, I had everything written down. Um, I told myself that by the age of 20, I wanted to be married. Um, by 22, I wanted to have a house. And by the age of 25, I wanted to have kids. 
And so um, these were some of the plans that I had as my younger self back then, praise God. And I remember three days before my first wedding, I had gone into an argument with my ex-husband at the time. And right then and there, I should have canceled the wedding, praise God. I should have canceled that marriage. But I continued to do things my own way and go, go according to what my flesh wanted to do. And so um, what happened, I, I went ahead and I got married the first time and within that first year everything around me became so chaotic and I remember exactly one year after that wedding day I found myself filing for a divorce and so at that time in my life I was angry I was I was hurt and I could not understand for a while why things did not work out as I had planned and it took me about two years after the divorce to understand that I was walking outside the will of God. Um, I, had to, I, I had to come to a realization that this isn't what God had intended for me in my life. And it wasn't until October of 2021 when I got married to my now husband, Matthew, that I fully understood that even though I had walked outside of God's will six years prior, that God was still merciful to forgive and that he had a much better plan that I would have ever imagined, praise God. And so sometimes because of my own will, I had to take myself back to the bottom, praise God. I had to go back to the place where God had intended for me to be. It was a place where I had no other choice but to completely surrender to him. I had to put my own plans and my own will aside and I had to come to a place where I fully understood the will of God concerning my life praise God I did not understand as I was going through but when I finally got re when I got married to Matthew everything finally made sense and that's how good God is sometimes that sometimes in a moment when we're going through the process we don't understand it but God has such a great love life uh, a great plan concerning your life sometimes we cannot see it but he said he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us praise God just as prophet McCray had said last Sunday he knows the plans that he has towards your life you have to believe in it you have to trust God with what he has concerning your life glory be to God and so the plans that God thinks towards you and I'm closing um it may anger you it may cause you to even question god it may even give you that urge to run away like jonah but trust me when i say this being outside of the will of god is not the place that you want to find yourself in when you're outside the will of god you are making that decision in yourself that i'm going to settle for less and less is not what God desires for you to have. And so I want to close out by telling somebody today to examine yourself. Look at your life. Look at the place that you are in at this present moment. Is the place that you are in the place that God wants you to be? Is this your very best place or not? And so I want to um, tell somebody, ask yourself, Am I truly in that place that God wants me to be? And am I obeying God's commandments? And these are my few words. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 